Hello there, I'm Mr. Mokalover, as y'all know, and this is TNO, and what we're playing is that Iberian Federation now. So last time, we basically continued down the focus tree, and we encountered a terrible, terrible global economic crisis because of oil. Well, it's not doing so well, but we gotta choose our next focus, in which this is all done for the oil crisis, the best that we could do. Let's ask for assistance with Gibraltar now. A lion's share of our union's budget goes to the maintenance of the Gibraltar Dam, being constantly over-encumbered by the expense and with the possibility of cutting costs and being forbidden due to the cat cat catastrophic consequences the dam failing would have in our Mediterranean coastline, we demand a partner to share the burden with us. With the most advanced economy on the planet, the U.S. could be interested in providing in or investing in Gibraltar. In compensation, we could provide them with shipping privileges through the Mediterranean, which sounds like a pretty good deal. And right now, because of the economic crisis, ooh, we have some nuclear carriers that'd be good. Uh, we still have a deficit, but you know, our GDP is 55, almost 56 billion dollars. Cool, and we just got this stuff for carriers, nice. Uh, doesn't even matter though, since we can't even really use them or make them. Let's go back to industries, 1971. We've gotten really pretty far in this uh, campaign, I'd say. We can do that, let's grab some more resource efficiency gain, because that's always nice to grab. Uh, just so we could get maybe just one more, two more aluminum. Maybe just a little bit, I think getting a little bit more steel would be pretty nice too. Hold on, we actually have an excess of this. There you go. Nice. And I guess we can grab one more steel then. In exchange. Alright, America. We'll buy some stuff for you, but help me pay off the dam, or pay for the maintenance of the dam. Which I don't know why America... Oh, look at this! Attract American investors? 50% chance that nothing happens. 25% chance that our GDP growth will increase a little. Or we get a military factory. So, 225 factories. 225. And our GDP growth currently is... 10.7. 10.7. I think the same thing down here. Oh, almost the same thing. Instead of more GDP growth, we get a small new source of income. Come on. Oh, I don't think anything happened. Oh, it's sad. Oh, that's so sad. We were close. And we'll do it down here. 25% uh, chance of Marrakesh getting a new factory. 50% chance of nothing. Please, don't hurt me. Please, don't hurt my emotions like this. Don't toy with me. And the Icelandic Iberian Fishing Cooperation, we both get a small new source of income. Okay, cool. Let's go and close out the damn thing so we don't need to see that. And democracy in Iberia. Yeah, we're getting all these done. We'll see how far we can get. Maybe we'll get these done investing in Cuba, get slightly more GDP growth. Yeah, hmm, that was sad. We invested so much for the investors. But they still told us no. Oh, and Iran is at war and going crazy. Ask our observer status in the OFM. Well, we aren't ready to commit to joining the OFN in the present. We have some sort of formalized association with them should serve, or that should serve our needs in this vast world. Besides, if you get too close to them, then we'll get dragged with them should anything bad happen overseas. Therefore, it would be better for us to simply ask for an observer status in the OFM, not chaining us to them, while also not leaving us stranded without any prospect of foreign assistance should we need it. Not a bad idea. Really not a bad idea. What are we creating right now? We're getting some refineries. We get some civilian factories, but the OFN says it won't help with the dam, of course. A quite re reasonable suggestion at the recent diplomatic summit in America, with the OFN members unneeding investment for the incomplete Gibraltar Dam has been rejected, alright? I'm pretty sure we completed it, though. The economic possibilities that this project could have had for our nation are very considerable. The thorns stuck in our side could have finally been removed to unlock previously unimaginable possibilities for trade and electricity production. Therefore, this is an extremely disappointing development considering our huge efforts to get closer to America and its allies despite the fearsome dangers it could bring for us from other European states less inclined towards the capitalist bloc. This betrayal will not be quickly forgotten for both by our government and for the Iberian people, who have found out via an unfortunate media leak. Since we cannot really re retreat from our current foreign policy direction, this has just reduced several key strides made so far. Hopefully, our relations can be improved quickly, or relatively quickly, so that we can get back on track for solving other issues with the OFN. Gosh dang it. Ah, America! Well, honestly, I don't even know why we're asking them. I mean, the dam's already done. Technically, at least in my mind, that should be bypassed if you already have the dam done. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, unless it's for like, you know, routine maintenance. Yeah, I think maybe it was for routine maintenance. Let me double check that. Uh, yeah, it goes to the maintenance of the, 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 with the dam, okay. Cool, that's fine, it just, I don't know. It seems kind of like a weird thing to ask. Hey, America, you're the richest country. Can you help me pay for the dam? Of course, probably the Americans are probably gonna say no. <laughs> that could be anybody. But regardless, uh, a lot of the comments from yesterday, pretty much, oh, hold on, we can still recover. Iberians are quickly recover recovering from the crisis. Yes, please. Good news. Our actions and measures have had good effect, and the effects of the oil crisis are being resolved as we, as we speak. We are recovering faster than anyone could have dreamed of when it hit, and it shouldn't be too much longer until the worst is behind us. <gasps> yes, yes. Oh, it's not that much better, but it, it's getting better. 
Okay, their deficit went back up. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, well, that's not good. That's okay, though. As long as it goes all the way down, that's what I want to see. Siberia's defeated the Western Siberian Republic. But actually, what I was trying to say... Oh, God, look at that. The West... Si the West? No. We have the Provisional Commissariat of Western Russia <clears throat> versus Kingdom of Siberia. I have a good feeling, even though these guys got gas masks, that the Kingdom of Siberia, they might just pull out in the end here. They might just pull out. So, But like I was trying to say before I interrupted myself, and events erupted us. Most, the vast majority of comments, what the heck is Egypt doing? Oh my goodness! Anyways, uh, the comments included, were for me, uh oh, to play all different countries, like, play as the French state, which never wins. Oh, the United, that's what they are doing. Um, you know, play as a French state, play as different Russian nations, yes, I will, I definitely plan on doing that. I'll play as America sometime, I'll play as Burgundy, look, for the coming months, at the time of this recording, I'm going to be playing a lot of TNO as much as I possibly can because I really love the mod. It's really, really awesome. Uh, but now, since we're done with this side, we have a lot to go with this side over here. Cultural diversity and protection? At the end of the day, we are a federation of constitu constituent nations, not an all-encompassing juggernaut that tramples down on its, on its own people. It's been this way even, even before the Iberian wedding of Ferdinand and Isabella. Perhaps Franco was right to clamp down on the autonomy of the Basque and Catalans at the time of the Civil War, but that time has passed. God did not make the Castilians, Leonese, or Portuguese to rule alone. He made them as equals. Uh, with the political situation no longer necessitating Franco's stern measures, we can instead look to healing the divisions between the majority and minorities in our, in our nation, and guarantee that our brother, national brotherhood will endure any future tribulations or tribulations. I will play as Italy someday. This is really interesting that... Oh, cool. That they did this over here, but I'm trying to finish with my comments. Maybe even Turkey someday, because they can, they have that little conflict someday with uh, Italy when the Triumvirate still exists. This is really sad to see Italy do so poorly. But you know what? That's why we left the Triumvirate after it collapsed. So, on the agreed final day of the diplomatic mission that the Iberian delegation had been sent to the U.S., delegates from the different OFN nations and the hopeful European diplomats gathered at the Intercontinental Hotel, D.C. Their luxurious limousines arriving in the much the same torrential rain that had greeted the Iberians a few days earlier. The atmosphere upon entering the conference room was rather jovial. The room littered with small groups of dignitaries hunched in different corners in deep conversation, raucous laughter reaching even outside the making making the regular guests chuckle. Upon the last official entering in stewards closing the door, the move became more professional, the Americans quickly making the OF, official OFN stance regarding the IBR's request. <clears throat> An audible sigh of relief was heard from the Europeans as the discussion then shifted onto the regulations and limits of the Iberians' involvement in OFN observation. The US agreed that has led to the possibility of a significant turning point in history as Iberia draws closer to the alliance of the free nations and further from fascist Europe. Fantastic. We get a guarantee of independence from them, we get a non aggression pact, and military access. Cool. Awesome. So now, if anyone attacks us, the Americans are going to fight and die for us. Well, eventually. We're not in the organization. Ooh, they are, which is kind of cool. Oh, uh, Norway's back in the unity pact. Okay, uh, okay, so there goes Syria. Good for you. I, I want to see if Egypt can navally invade the Italian Empire. That would be kind of awesome to see, not going to lie. That'd be really, really cool. But I don't think they can, especially since they defeated Syria. Military austerity? Yeah, no. That's too much, son. Sorry. I will cut down on the construction budget as well. One, two, three, four, five... ish and a half. Not bad. Ooh, do we got something else here? Import? We might as well. We got enough political power. We would have nothing to do with it. We get one a day. How How is this going along? 0.25 a day. Huh? That's not terrible, but could be better. Academic base is slowly improving. I do a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and, uh... Keep us company. <laughs> coffee keeps us company, yeah. Or nice and warm. Either one of those two. Mass mechanization, 96 out of 240. Over here, 211.5 out of 240. Our poverty is slowly, slowly getting better. <clears throat> and once we get up here, we get faster construction speed. You get more t t income tax... Or income rate factor. Taxable population. Oh, yes, please. But let's honor our rural roots. The economy isn't what it used to be. In the days of the peasantry, as a majority of the population are long past, but does this mean we should simply embrace the materialistic urbanism of the Americans or the Reich? Of course not. The soul of Iberia is that of ruralism, even if economic realities mean that cities and industries are the way of the future in practical terms. In the rural life, we find reflected a simpler, happier time when the peasant wild away the days and his fields under the responsible stewardship of his lower and the local parish. This is what we honor, the peace and respectability of the life that was for the vast majority of our history. Sounds not bad. Sounds like fun. Or maybe not fun, but a pretty good thing. Uh, we spend political power to get some experience. I guess. Why not? Why not? You know. Let's see over here. Big tanks. 
the 40 combat with APCs. <clears throat> and my boss is starting to crack for some reason. I am not going through a second puberty, please. Uh, 20. Equipment capture ratio is 5%. 5%. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, ever since I think maybe TNO came out, <clears throat> and that uh, they you see you start with some companies or some support companies that or some divisions that start with signal companies. I've been using signal companies a little bit more in all all of my campaigns, which has kind of been, been interesting. Let's get another nuclear reactor. I think we should get another one. We want to become a nuclear power, don't we? Italy just got nuclear weaponry. Why don't Why don't we? Why don't we? One, two, three, four, five, seven. Oh, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I love six. Hey, look at that. It looks looking better. Cut it. Even though it's not going to do much for us. There we go. We cut it even a little bit more. Not bad. Less than a billion in terms of depth. Uh, in terms of deficit. That's not bad. One, two, three, four. Well, one, two, three, four, five. We still got. We still have five full full lines of production going on at the same time. Beautiful. Import armor designs. Don't mind if we do. The first rural roots festival. The sun beats down on a clear, beautiful day. The blue sky stretches overhead under the horizon and beneath its azure canopy. A man in ragged old-fashioned peasant's clothing heaves and grunts at the back end of an old iron plow, muttering curses at the stubborn or ox hitched to the front. Move, you old bastard, bellows the peasant, swinging a leather whip at the beast's hindquarters. A nobleman on the horseback, dressed in rural finery, chuckles and canters forth, giving the ox a whack with his riding crop and finally setting the mound of muscle in motion. The ox gives a guttural breath. Ray, lifting its head from the grazing and continuing on its arduous journey across the field. The peasant smiles and raises a fist in triumph, drawing cheers from the large crowds of onlookers seated nearby. A camera clicks, capturing a memory of the past come back to life. Of course, this is no 16th century farm, but the first annual Rural Roots Festival is done to honor Iberia's rural past. Out on a warm day near Madrid, the festival has drawn tens of thousands so far, with many more expected to arrive from as far as the field as Catalonia and Portugal. The peasant and nobleman are just two of many historical reenactors who have been tirelessly entertaining and educating the crowds. Besides, the entrance to the main performance field stretches triple row of stalls, numbering in the hundreds. Many a well-off farmer has traveled up from Andalu Andalusia and extra Madura to hawk prime produce, jam, wine, and honey. The citizens of Madrid, so used to the grays and browns of the urban life, are spoiled for the choice and clearly dazzled by the charm and diversity of the countryside's gifts. As the day draws to a close, and the sun dips towards the horizon, sleepy children are herded home, many tightly clutching toys and curious, hard won in, uh, curious in the hard won traditional games. More often than one farmer, who mere years ago was struggling to make ends meet, fires up his truck and sets off for home with a load of empty crates and a bulging wallet. Sounds like fun. As earnings and attendance figures rolls in, a local council member smiles this year's budget will be nicely padded for once. Perhaps not a better time, but certainly a happier one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Iberia forever. Odd as it may seem, this is one new tradition that has come to us in these troubled times, Iberia itself. Initially created for the solely pragmatic purposes, it's come to represent something ent else entirely. A great and diverse people, the Iberian people, who have having been, been divided by tribal boundaries, petty rulers, and mad ideologues for millennia, millennia, have finally come together as one family. From the plains of Andalusia, to the mountains of Navarra, and from the picturesque Lisbon seaside, to the humming industrial towns of Catalonia, our strength and brotherhood flourishes like never before. The nations that fathered us will live on, but they are no longer all that we live for. Iberia now, and Iberia forever. We get more stability, even though we don't need them. We don't need more stability now. We just, you know, fine, whatever. It's okay. Wow. AP is really popular. Very popular. Oil processing. Nice. Very nice. So we're done with all this stuff for now. Let's come over to engineering. We already got that. So let's grab some radar. Why not? Go to radar stations. Because radar is always helpful. And I just realized Monaco exists. I mean, the Vatican City exists. And we saw San Marino yesterday, I think. Good. Okay. Italy. Come on. This is This is pathetic. Happy 1972, my friends, though. It's a new year, a new was, and we're doing okay. The debt is under a little under $20 billion, while our GDP is over $57 billion. And your deficit is not looking bad. Italy, come on. Oh, boy. No, 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 no. $3 billion. We slash it. it go if we slash it, we basically save around close to $2.4 billion. That's a lot of money. That's a buttload of money. Come on, guys. Come on, Italy. How's the Catholic going, actually? The F French War. The French War? Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Are you guys in a faction together? Oh, wait, are you all... Or maybe you're all just fighting the Arab... United Arab States. Siberian Western... There's War War, but that's just Iraq. I didn't realize... Okay. That is very odd. 
Uh, oh, the French state is, is a puppet? Wait, when did they become a puppet? Oh, you're all puppets. Always has been. But wow, I never knew that. Uh, that's a little, that's what, that's quite a bit ahead of time. Wait, why is that? Oh, it's 1970. This is 1980. Ooh. So, let's get some, uh, that, no, we'll go grab some of this. Mechanical ballistic computer. Really making sure our tanks are just top tier. I did not realize Italy had so many puppets. Holy cow. They have, of course, Ita African East... Italy, East Africa, Greece, Bosnia, Croatia, Romania. The, I didn't realize the French state was under them, too. But let's give it a nation of freedom. Freedom to assemble, to talk, to criticize, to protest, all concessions we can make. Ruling certainly easier when you sc your critics are silenced, at least muffled. But we must accept that the resumption of censorship and civic crackdowns on relatively harmless political elements will only damage the people's trust in our newly elected government. Democracy might have its fair shares of woes, but those who claim it to be the worst form of government... Uh, our least worst form of government are probably worth listening to over the more draconian Francoist O Guard. Probably. Probably. Look at Iraq. Ba artist Iraq. Egypt, how are you doing this so well? I mean, I understand it's the Italians and all, but. Oh, look at that smiling man. Gamal Abdel Nasser. If they had a unique focus tree, I would t totally love playing some. American humanitarian aid, oil crisis. Oh, you have Wehrmacht advisors and American aid, American no-fly zone, American desert scouts. So America really wants to see Italy hurt. Er, Germany and Germany wants to help them out too. Oh, what else we got here? And we have uh, American economic specialists. Oh, the Italians invaded down there, and they invaded Iraq, Arabia, not Iraq. They are. Oh, America, you're helping out authoritarian socialists. This is a weird universe. Oh, they're out of manpower, though. That's... Oh, oh, no. Yep, they're out of manpower. So is Italy. Holy crap. What? They're out of fuel. Holy crap. What the heck? Yeah, this is Italy. Look. That's their flag up there. Oh, you are a bald dude. Holy crap. Carlos Scorza. You are... Wow. Anyway. Ah, and we read this earlier, so... Yes. Yes. Recovering from that oil crisis. Rumors of discontent. Zero. You're both killing each other. But Egypt has some fuel. But Italy, you have none. They have a lot more division, probably. And they have only 14... And they're... Can I get involved? You know what? If we can beat up Italy together... Can we do, can we do that? Oh, I can't get involved. No. America. So, Republican Democrat coalition group. Sort of deal conservative democracy. Sending them exports. Uh, imposed rationing. A nation of freedom. Cool. Uh, registry of political parties. Why not? Prior to the Civil War, many parties or groups on both sides of the political spectrum were fairly informal in nature. This was especially true of the radical left, which commonly organized itself along the lines of trade unions, workers' militias, and village communes. It is only common sense to require, require and any and all political groups to register as a formal political party so that everyone can keep track of who exactly stands for what these days. We lose social democracy and literal democracy, and we get controlled opposition. Oh. That does not sound very good. <laughs> controlled opposition? Um. Hmm. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six. Once we get another one on that, then I'll cut down the construction budget even more. Oh, this is so sad. <sighs> Egypt. You're doing so well. So well. We're getting more fuel every day. Plenty of stockpile stuff. Maybe except for planes. Carry fighters, yeah. God, I wish we had more manpower. I wish I could raise my conscription, conscription level up. Ah, uh, so sad. Actually, do we have carrier? Oh, we can't... We need a... Yeah. Hmm... Resource extraction, very cool. Um, you know what? We get more fuel. All right, let's get more rubber first. I mean, I like we said earlier in this campaign. I don't have to focus on this, but in my mind, I'm trying to set up Iberia, not Spain, but Iberia, for a better future, just in case things go to pot and we can't import stuff from a from America. I almost said Walmart. Hold on. Yeah, let's import stuff as Iberia. Import stuff from Walmart. Walmart has a lot of fuel, right? Hmm. <laughs> Even if I slash construction spending, it's not going to get that much better. Oh, Italy, why did you have to come back with a vengeance? I wanted to see the Egyptian Revolutionary Command Council do well. Actually, who's leading the Arabian Republic? Oh, they got a lot of resistance. Mr. It's a little chunky. Abdullah al Salal. Hmm. Rich Street Political Parties and Le de Prensa e Imprenta. The press and printing act is a consolidated version of our various media related proposals put forth by our delegates. Some of the opposition claim that it was mere censorship, but anyone can see that it is merely common sense standards for news media to follow. No defamatory claims, no family unfriendly content on front pages, and so on. As it's so, to so terrible to think of the children now and then. Well, maybe. 
Uh, very nice. Doom 251. Cool. Very good. And let's grab even better guns. Turret range finders. Yes, please. What's wrong with these, these tanks? That's not bad. That's really nice. Nice. Very good. Very good. Military construction. Not 75 yet. Let's go back to do some more stuff with our guns. Because it's been a while since we've worked on our guns. Mm, we have Republic of Sudan, huh? Oh, this is so sad. Why is Africa independent? Oh, I'm joining with my cat, Binky. Hello, Bink. Bink. Oh, this is so bad. So sad. Zanu Zambi. Zambabwe. Zanu Zimbabwe, huh? He's a big guy. Uh, liberal democracy. Even though they got quite a few fascists down there. Joshua Nkomo. Well, that's cool. You inta. You n it. You and it. It's like you inta from Overall Blues. I like his beard. Jonas, I like your beard. The Africa. He's like, mm, what are you thinking, David? <laughs> oh, it's funny. I like looking at the portraits. Sometimes you find funny people. Hmm. Finish with the coffee. I like that blue scarf. That's very nice. Oh, you actually have a, you actually have a biography. That's really. I love TNL, man. Like the bi biographies and the stories of these people. So awesome. So awesome. I love it. Demilitarize the police. During the Civil War, the Spanish Metropolitan Army proved itself either treasonous or comically inept, with only the Army of Africa being reliably, reliably capable and loyal fighters. As a consequence, Franco drastically expanded the number of roles of the police to maintain order among the ruins. Entire squads on patrol with military grade equipment certainly put the fear of God into any recidivist's regs, but they're also expensive and prone to overreacting to perceived threats. With any major unrest, the secessionist movement is now suppressed. Such a blow to face or force is no longer necessary, and we can be confident that rolling back Franco and Salazar's reforms will not cause any undue problems for us in the long term. We lose civility, but get more conservative democracy. Wow, we're really pushing for conservative democracy. I guess that makes sense since they technically did win the elections, which I try to alter as much as I could. I try my best. I, I swear to God. I try my best. So, <clears throat> Iberia is a very fun nation. Oh, this is so sad. So sad. Oswan? Oh, that's where the dam should be, right? There's supposed to be a dam right there. I wonder if they get an option for that dam. Hmm. So we're back up to almost 850 million. Almost 60 billion in GDP. I love this so much. I don't remember how we got such a low an annual debt interest. But you know what? During bad times for everyone in the world, maybe interest just goes down for everyone. And that's kind of nice. When everything hits a fan, hopefully you have some money. So that way you can spend a lot and do really well. Because 10%, 10.7% versus 0.4%, I mean, Iberia is going to be probably, could potentially become the wealthiest nation uh, or the fastest growing economy in Europe, which would be very awesome. Let's go ahead and grab some of this. Nah, we'll grab some more radar. Over the horizon radar, why not? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so much. That's too much. That's 2.5 billion. Oh, who can afford that? Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that as well. Do that too. You might as well, why not? Oh, we were doing that too, huh? Demilitarizing the police, that's fine. Uh, let's come over here to the Azores. Oh, that'd be so helpful. And we can do it down here in Africa, too, which would be actually probably bene really beneficial. Uh, but keep doing that, too. There you go. Cool. And the regional question. Unfortunately, even after Franco's long-term crackdown, regionalism remains an issue that will undoubtedly rear its ugly head again, if not dealt with appropriately and in short order. We're loath to continue Franco's policies, which actively seem to have encouraged a stiffening of resistance at times. But at the same time, we cannot hark back to the popular front's policy of increased autonomy, for that would only end in a disaster in the dissolution of Iberia. Perhaps the matter must be put to the Cortes and the cabinet. Perhaps it may be even worth putting out feelers towards regional groups. Oh, did we just get some, uh, this time? Hey, 60 billion. That is nice. I love it. At least for us, like, late game, um, TNO, well, late game for now, because TNO 2 will eventually come out, but, uh, late game, like, if you plan things somewhat correctly, somewhat, you know, somewhat correctly, uh, things can look, work out very, very, very well. Like, that GDP, it's always in your late game when you find a lot of success, growing your GDP, growing your economy, having a good time with everything here, it just, ah, oh, it's so nice. It's like, uh, we're, we're finally making right. We're doing it right. We're helping the people of our country out. Probably. Unless you want to play as Aryan Brotherhood, or maybe, you know... <laughs> uh, what if our nation was over here? Uh, oh, wait. There's no foreign claims. Uh, or, you know, Aryan Brotherhood, or maybe Magadan, maybe. I don't remember too much about each one. Siberian Black Army. There's a lot of fun nations around here. Oh, Italy. Why did you have to defeat them? Oh, that... Oh, wow. How did you get over there? Holy cow. Oh, they must have took out Dofar? 
Wow, Italy, you are... Sometimes they go democratic. I guess they did not go democratic this time with Mr. Balding over here. In the factories? Rumors of discontent. In the government. I've got to play Italy sometime. Oh my goodness. Friends in the army. For God? Who? For king? For Italy. I don't know Italian. Hmm. Cool. And let's do this. Accentia expansion? My, might as well. The establishment of Accentia was easily the wisest decision made by Cadillos in regards to our internal security. Operating at a level the police and even the military, military cannot, the Accentia is both the sword and shield of the state, and by extension, the people of Iberia. Since they have not apparently made any moves against our democratic processes, we feel the confident in our belief that they have served the state first and foremost, rather than those in power. In light of this and their years of loyal service to Iberia, it is only fitting that the organization be expanded and its funding increased, especially as the role of the police is reduced in our renewed state. But unfortunately, I will be right back. My apologies about that, but we're back, and Iberia is still recovering from the oil crisis, which is great, great to hear. But we do have an event, the matter of special regions. Regionalism was a scourge of Iberia. It had been that way all the way back to the Reconquista when the peninsula had been divided amongst half a dozen warring kings for centuries. Regionalism was a lot of fester until it became a sagging boil that exploded into two devastating civil wars. Now, with democracy restored and the sensible administrators of the AP in power, Iberia had at once, in a millennia, opportunity to put aside regionalism once and for all. Mr. V knew this. His enemies in Congress did not. For almost an hour now, they've been causing a scene. The parliamentarians of the Union uh, Republicana and the Partido Renovador Democrático, berating the government in the strongest possible terms over its opposition to the autonomy of the regions. Mr. V had listened to their outbursts quietly, allowing others from his party to respond to their cajoling, but he was growing tired of the antics. Taking the next opportunity to speak, he rose to the podium. Fellow deputies, I have listened intently on the to the intervention of those opposite, and I must say I am thoroughly disappointed. It is as if those opposite have forgotten all the events of the past 40 years, how separatism fueled the divisions of Spain and tore it apart in the Civil War, how Iberia, mere years ago, was plunged into the fires of separatist insanity, leaving hundreds of thousands dead. Well, we are here in the government, we have not forgotten the dead. We have not forgotten the debt of blood that Iberia owes, its, owes to its martyrs and has died for its liberty and united against separatists and extremists alike. No, we will not allow you to once again fan the flames of separatism that have torn this nation apart. We in the government will chart a new course, the one towards a strong, united Iberia. The opposition howled in indignation at Miss uh, Senor V's fiery retort, and the debate raged on and on. Iberia united and f -f -f free. Cool, and now our deficit is about a billion. Oof. Oh, whoa, whoa, look at that GDP growth. After we recovered from more from the oil crisis. Oh my God. Oh, baby, that looks 13.9% minus 3.2 billion. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love Iberia. Oh my gosh. I really wish I could have gotten market liberals in power, like I said in the last video, and you guys said in yesterday's comments, but mm, mm, that, that's, this makes me happy. Oh. Mm, yeah. Sign me up. But anyways, we're building a lot of radars. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. Expansion. We could probably honestly afford military spending, but now nah, we're good. And we shall do token autonomy. Naturally, the matter of autonomy has already been decided. There will be no states within states in Iberia again. While we understand their desires, regionalists must learn to accept the reality of the Iberian Congress. If total legal equality is good enough for everyone else, it's good enough for them. We shall not budge on this front. Though we, of course, will allow for minor concessions, the right to choose their own public holidays, along with their own culture-specific issues, perhaps. Yes, yes. New ways of tackling... Oh, we can cut down. Now, I could really invest in GDP, but... Mm, Mm, that makes me happy. New ways of tackling terrorism? Ever since Franco seized power from the First Republic, the peninsula has had to deal with hordes of separatists utilizing terrorism in their campaigns for independence. This legacy of bloodshed has continued, continued on to Iberia, and we've been shackled to it as well. Even though Iberia is a free republic now, many of these terrorists simply haven't forgotten gotten the point. In nearly every minority region, separatism has taken a major hit, but still holds a monumental popularity amongst, amongst segments of the population. Most of these people will never take to action to further the cause they support, but there are those who are willing to go as far as to sacrifice their lives for a misguided campaign. Usually, they're just arrested. This action, while effective, is not entirely sustainable. These terrorists will have to just remain in prison until they are broken out by their cohorts and return back to causing chaos on the streets. Only one thing can definitely rule out this possibility, and it is their death, but killing the terrorists brings on a whole new level of debate. How shall the Accentia eliminate these people? The most practical option would be just to kill off anyone suspected of being a separatist. Is this like the Filipino leader of like Duarte or something like that? This could prove very, very messy and it's highly risky. However, it would eliminate all of them far faster. Alternatively, we could hit send a hitman to eliminate them quickly and quietly. This is far smaller odds of causing a stir up. After all, it's only a couple of criminals, but it would take far longer to properly get rid of them all. Finally, we could always back away from this plan and leave them be. Nothing wagered and nothing lost, but nothing will be gained either. Keep things clean, liquidate them in prison, hire hitmen. Oh man. 
Oh, man. If this breaks out, this would be so bad. Well, they're terrorists. They're, they are terrorists. I don't want to lose stability, though. Liquidate them in prison? Hmm. You know what? Let's just do keep them keep things clean. Nothing bad could result from that, right? You gonna be terrorists? They are terrorist scum. Let's just be real. They are terrorist scum. So, like, let's be real here. They want to cause death. They want to cause destruction. We're just trying to defend our people. Yeah, yeah. We want to defend our people. Yeah, that's what we want to do. From potential death and hurt and onslaught. Hmm. Not cool. Not cool. Why would people want to hurt other people? No, no, no. We are one united Iberia. One and strong. And also, Italy did win down here, so... They took out the Arabian Republic, which is a little disappointing. We are experiencing technical difficulties. An empire for all. Improving oil markets. That's good for them. Uh, the Western Shield. King Umberto II. Ascendant Navy. Betting Fascism. What else we got now? Oh, they got a lot, quite a few things. Let's see. They got mandatory defense classes. Party of 39. Advisor level 5. Bureaucrats and barons, and the oil crisis, of course, like we have, and then they have uh, SIM, or SIM, Polic policing level 8. Wow! Max volunteer force divisions plus 33. Holy crud! That's a lot! Cool. Let's go ahead and do supervised democracy. In a post dictatorial nation, the protection of the electoral process is of great concern. The longest old guard, fascists, and Marxists alike can be relied on to attempt to subvert our democracy whenever the opportunity to do so presents itself. Though we've already taken the initiative and tried the secret ballot, we must go further. Election monitors will help prevent electoral fraud, and a new cadre of bureaucrats will ensure that the electoral rolls remain clean and well organized. If the Iberian democracy of the future can thank us for anything, it will be our dedication to the principles of fair and free democracy, regardless of how inconvenient it is for our party's interests. Regulated public meetings, registered voting, cool. Come back. Oh, rights and duties of special regions law. Iberia was and always will be a unitary country ruled from the center. The victory of the AP had made sure of that, and President Fraga Ibarbarne wanted to make sure everyone else remembered it. Regionalist hysteria and t terroristic separatism would not be tolerated in the new democratic Iberia. He knew that the sooner the, the everyone, including the troublesome separatists themselves, understood and accepted this, the better off everyone else would be. I wanted to see if we had any oil crisis up here real quick. We have no oil crisis. Oh my god, that's amazing. The new law passed by Congress made that very clear. Defining the rights and duties of Iberia's regions, the legislation practically ended all pretense of political autonomy, leaving them mere or more as symbolic institutions at actual levers of government. The large portion, a large portion of people would undoubtedly be, undoubtedly be very angry. The opposition was practically livid. They would get all over it eventually, though. Yet there was little point rubbing the salt in an open wound. The separatists would be offered a new few symb small symbolic concessions, things that might be of some importance to them, but of what real or little significance to the unity and security of Iberia? What did he care if the Catalans and Basque wanted to speak their own languages in private, or perform their own little national dances? Such things harm no one. It would, of course, anger the hardliners in his party and those further to the right, but that was inevitable when charting a course away from the ruinous, divisive policies or politics of the past. Franga knew that he was in a unique position to finally solve the issue of the regions once and for all, and forge a democratic and truly united Iberia. This had to be done despite all the detractors on the left and the right, whatever the cost, a step in the right direction. Cool. Now hold on. They say Franga. Someone keeps... Is it Fraga or Fraga? Because this is Fraga here. And it says Manuel Fraga Erebana. So it must be Fraga. Step in the right direction is cool and good, but... we got to figure out the guy's name. I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't be trying to cut down the debt. And I should be investing in my GDP, but... Debt is but a number. Debt is but a number, and it can only hurt you if you really want it to. Sometimes. Cool. Infantry entry take two. Good. Good, 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 good. Hmm. Very nice. 62 billion. Ah. Oh, so nice. I could get down construction spending even more, but now nah, we're good. You know, once we hit zero, if we can hit zero, like, national debt, I don't mind, like, not cutting civilian spending anymore. Just because, you know, cutting civilian spending isn't always great. So let's import some more of this. That'd be good. We still have 1,700 political power. Jesus, that's so much. It's really nice. But so much. Supervised democracy? Nice. Very nice. And we want to get out of this poverty rate, which will happen maybe next month. Oh, that'd be so great. We are just doing awesome. I love it. I love this so much. And we got two more days for supervised democracy. Great. And we shall do a nation of morals. Good character of society, nation, and values is crucial for any good Catholic nation like our own. Decades ago, godless revolutionaries sought to tear down every moral boundary and stand in a great or and standard in a great nation. The streets of Barcelona were filled with drunkards, hedonists, and loose women. Had it not been for the moral guidance of the Cadillos and the church, they might have spread their vile prolificacy. 
pro profligacy throughout the entire peninsula. This was surely a result of secularization and the liberation propagated by the popular front and the radical allies. No such depravity shall ever find a foothold again under our watchful eye, and we must educate the nation correctly as to ensure the same remains true under future generations, or at least for future generations as well. And I know let's get some more training. Actually, it looks like we will be getting done this investment in the Caribbean and South America, which is pretty cool. Southern Cone, nice. Their GDP growth will go up. Nope, nope. Even if we don't cut it, we still get money, but no. I am here to slash and pay back and not put our future children in debt. Decrease in poverty. There we go. Thanks for greater poverty and relief efforts, as well as expansion of our civilian economy. The poverty rate has increased significantly enough to be notable internationally. As our government congratulates itself for its efforts, the first official state projections on the impact of this improved popular prosperity are filed, or filed, stating that the people are able to access superior goods, economic opportunities shall be greatly increased, and workforce shall be capable of greater and greater feats. Beautiful. Oh my god, yes. This cannot be just... It's just doing great. We're doing great. I, mean, I love it. I love it. Are we still improving at least a little bit? 8.7? Or 1.8, I mean. So if we could get down to there, that'd be great, but you know what? We're doing so well. I mean, my goodness. Yeah, I can do that, because why not? GDP. Oh my, look at that. Almost roughly 10 billion, 9.5 billion in annual deficits. Oh my goodness. Within a few years, we can pay off the entire debt and just make gangbusters for our GDP. Oh my god. <laughs> I love this. I love TNL. Oh man. Woo. Mm. Is there a way for me to. Actually, we still have the ledger here. Uh, ideology, stability, political. Actually, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of political power in these nations. Factory-wise, Germany, and then U.S. Still pretty high, but Germany has more. The Japanese are looking pretty large, too. Italian Empire is looking pretty big. We're fifth. We are fifth in the world in terms of industry. Yet, we do not have a population even close to any of the top four. We are doing amazing, guys. I almost never click on this, like this uh, ledger, but... Oh my goodness. That is so good. Mistakes were made. It's hardly heresy to say that the Caduios were, were too far sometimes. Doubtless, those had Iberia's best interests at heart, but everyone knows that what they say about hell and good intentions. Indebted through, though we may be to their vigilance, we must not indulge in any whitewashing of their deeds. Nobody needs to know about the gory details, but publicly accepting the realities brought about by the harsh times the Caduios reigned over is an important first step towards rebuilding trust between ourselves and the electorate. Not least because there are many former regime staff within our party, of course, too. But yeah, I almost never clicked on this. I want to see if there's any like GDP let's see, research slots. China has five? Whoa! They have a third of a billion. How did they get five? They got no political power. They must be still doing a lot of stuff. Japan is not very stable, which makes sense. Um, and neither is U N I T A. Political power one in the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic. Okay. Population. Who's most? India has more population, which makes sense, I guess, because it's more united. Well, it looks a little bit more united than China is, because they don't have Manchuria. But if they have Manchuria, that'd be kind of wild. The U.S. actually has a bigger population than, than Germany. Shangxi, Iberian Federation, yeah, we're not the biggest population. Uh, population is that thousand, so sixty-seven million. That's still not bad. Population fact factory-wise, yeah, we're fifth. That's that's pretty good. Not gonna lie. War support only the Kazakh Soviet Social Republic has a hundred percent. Wow, eighty-seven percent in Italian Empire. We currently have not a lot. <laughs> oh, whoops. Stability though, we're pretty darn stable. We are stable. We're more stable than Italy, but we're tied with stability with the UK and Sweden, which is pretty nice. Even the US isn't as stable. They're slightly less stable than uh, Italy. Italy, Sweden is the only somewhat left-wing nation out of the top five to be stable. Hmm. Authoritarian, probably democracy, conservative, conservative democracy, and fascism. And the French states are up there too. That's not bad. I, is, is there a way for me to see GDP? I mean, I, I would like to see like the GDP of different nations, because at least in the Thousand Week Reich mod, you can see the GDP of all the nations if you really wanted to with their ledger. There might be a way for us to see that. There might not be. Oh my God, we're, we're below 18 billion now. Oh, it's so good. I rewrite the penal code. So under the Caduios, there was an aggressive approach to law enforcement at all times. While we recognize the necessity of strong arm tactics by the Accentium, the court system itself should not have such a reputation for brutality and heavy handedness amongst the common people. The working class especially remains worry of, wary of them despite their promises. It would be the most prudent to rewrite our nation's penal code and ensure proper judicial oversight, especially given the strong sympathies for the Caduios amongst judges and prosecutors. Few Iberians know President 
uh, Fraga. A great number of them have voted for him, most because they believed that he and the AP represented a cautious and conservative twist for Iberia, a sort of halfway house between the old dictatorial regime and the new fledgling democracy. Many knew though, that he served briefly in the old regime as Minister for Information and Tourism, yet few Iberians recognized his face in the newspapers or even and even less knew what his voice sounded like. Fraga wanted to change that. If he was to be the man who led Iberia into its future as a modern de democratic nation, he had to be a constant source of inspiration and com comfort. Yet so many simply saw him just as another collaborator. Speaking directly to the Iberians in their homes via the radio, he could give them his side of the story. Fellow Iberians, he said, beginning his address to the nation, I am speaking to you today to address my role in the old regime. I am to, to say to you, as I have always said and will, will always say, that I am for a free, united, democratic Iberia, yet I believe we must remember the chaos which engulfed our homeland in these past few decades. The regimes of Salazar and Franco rose in situations of anarchy across the peninsula when the forces of extremism threatened to bring civilization toppling down. They united to form Iberia when under attack by those same forces of tyranny. Without these harsh measures, Iberia would not exist, and I would not be here talking to you today. Despite this, the violence and brutality of the old regime was unconscionable, and many mistakes were made. Some will ask why I do not feel guilt for my involvement in the regime of Salazar and Franco. As anyone, or as any who was there at the time could testify, I advocated long and hard within the ranks of the regime for democratic reforms to risk my own career and self. If the end result is Iberia, secure and free as it stands today, then I would gladly do it all over again. Wise, wise words. Let's see. Wow, okay, we just murdered, we just killed off any sort of authoritarian democracy. Well, it looks like we can no longer, uh, get that party in power and we still don't have like social what was it social democracy yeah all we still have are just your normal socialisms libertarian or authoritarian but no like social democracy hmm i know it, it does basically almost nothing for us now for us to uh slash the military budget but you know what this has got to go down it's got to go down i'm going to kill it and actually, did we? We didn't get this done yet. I was wondering if we got this done yet because it could give us a little bit more money. Cuba, our reserves will see an influx of cash, get more cash, small amount of money will enter our reserves. Oil processing, new money, new money. Cool. No, we could do that, but not really. Yeah, I'm going to wait on all that stuff. Uh, grab some uh, edge detection because we can. Why not? Nice. And we still have no manpower, but that's okay. All that money that matters right now is money. Money, 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 money. It's a rich man's world. Actually, this universe, it's 1972. How would music fare? Because I was thinking, it's it's a rich man's world, which is a pop tune by the group ABBA from Sweden. How would music turn out? And these guys are still fighting up there. Wow. We write the penal code. Franco was Franco. As we were repeatedly told our critics, yes, we are aware of everything that Franco did before, during, and after the Civil War. Should we renounce him merely because his actions were often unpalpable to modern sensibilities? No, his gradual easing of harsh laws and the successful return of the democracy proves more and more than anything that he was no fascist demagogue beholden to a bohemian corporal, but a highly pragmatic man who would go to any lengths for the sake of his beloved nation and his people. He only cracked down on genuine threats to Spanish stability, and in the case of the Reds, it was certainly well deserved. Did he accept the aid of Hitler and the motley of, and his motley of gangsters? Yes. But then who could have foreseen Germany's total conquest of Europe or the construction of Alanthropa? None should be so hasty to as to judge him with the benefit of hindsight. This will be our party line, and we, there shall be no apologies for it. Wow, fascism to positive. Uh, they're, they're already gone. The new penal code. Much had changed in Iberia since the days of the Cadillos. Democracy had been restored to Congress of the Peninsula. New, modernizing reforms were being passed almost every month. And the whole country was imbued with a renewed sense of optimism and hope for the future. Yep, in the dark and musty courtrooms of Iberia, one felt transported back to the ages past. Strict, archaic statutes, some dating back as far as 44. Continued to land a great deal of many innocent Iberians in jail, while the courts were packed with arapachiks of the old phalanges order. The government's new penal code put an end to all that. Hundreds of judges and other court officials associated with abuses under the Cadillos have been sacked, replaced with a new generation of young lawyers. A series of vital democratic reforms have been implemented, ensuring they're accused the right to the free legal representation and appeal while also stripping the military of the right to try its members in secret military courts. Freedom of assembly and press are enshrined, or enshrined in law for the first time in decades. Jose Luis Villar Palasi, a legal thinker as well as educational reformer, has earned himself as the government much praise for his role in devising the new system. Yet not everything has changed. Adultery, abortion, and divorce remain illegal, along with a whole series of other statutes regulating sexual and social freedom. The death penalty will continue to be enforced for heinous crimes. The right for workers to associate in unions remains nebulous at best, and the police have as much power as it did ever. Fraga. It's President Fraga, and his party toe a firm line. Iberia must be free and democratic. Its courts a beacon of fairness and equanimity on a continent gripped by extremist insanity, yet also must, must remain strong and just, ensuring the social and institutional fabric of the country, and already so fragile in the aftermath of the Iberian War, remains intact. Justice is the path to peace. And we're supposed to be paying the dam off again? Which, we asked America for help, but at this point, I'm glad they say no. We have sole rights to the Gibraltar Dam, and we shall reap its benefits just for us. No one can tell us what to do with it. Ah, oh, I love skirts. I'm just going to let time go on, because I need to 
we need to make sure this video doesn't go on past an hour. Because as you can see from the title, this is a final episode. Um, I, at the beginning of this episode, I wasn't sure this was going to be the last one. I was thinking about splitting this up into two videos, but at this point, I'm going to make it one big old video because I really enjoy doing this. So, and then Doctrine, we don't need that. Naval Doctrine, we could use that. Air Doctrine, we could probably use that too. It's fine. We've got plenty of political power. Doesn't matter. Oh, less than 17 billion. This is so nice. Oh, it's so good. So good. Oh my goodness, we're running out of infrastructure. That is not... Oh, no, 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 no. More civilian factories because we can. Get another nuclear reactor in there too. There you go. There you go. Is there anywhere else we can build roads? I'm not seeing too much green. We actually pretty much build roads everywhere. Oh, well, I still got some in Africa to do, but that's okay. Franco is Franco. And renew Catholicism. Even under the Caduyos, regular church attendance was far below its height in our more prosperous days. The only spike in recent years was when the German Civil War erupted and the people suddenly found something rather than pressing to pray about. What kind of Catholic party would we be able if we failed to take advantage of our newfound legislative power by reminding the people that Arabia is, above all else, a Catholic nation? Nobody's suggesting the mandatory church's acceptance. Not only because it goes against our principles, but also because it was unlikely to truly motivate the faithful. Instead, we should focus on inviting the church to play a greater role in social welfare and educational programs. Combined with a healthy dose of funding for new religious construction, especially in the chronically godless regions of Catalonia. Oh, God. Oh, sorry, I took the Lord's name in vain. And some well-deserved tax exemptions. We can restore Catholicism's place of pride as one of the pillars of Iberian culture and society. We are truly a Catholic nation. Oh, attract... Oh, here we go again. Okay, so we had 256 uh, factories in total. And our GDP growth is 13.9. 13.9 Reno. I don't think it worked. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, America. Come on, Canada. Crisis and Nanjing. Pray they survived. Robert McNamara. I never knew what he looked like before, but... Every time I think of his name, I'm thinking of five from, like, was it Black Ops or Black Ops 2? Oh, my goodness. Please. I want to play as Castro again. Uh, actually. Can I play as Castro again? That's minus seven? That's too much. That's too much. That's too much debt we take on. <laughs> if we don't cut down civilian spending. Oh, my goodness. This is a very... This is probably going to be the longest video I've ever done. I could really could have cut this down even further, but... Ah, oh, I found him. I found the man. The oil crisis, huh? Oh, he's still suffering. We're, we have no oil crisis here. Authoritarian socialism. Oh, my goodness. Import armor designs, you might as well. Oh, wait, did we get another factory that way, or... Maybe we had... No, we created one right there. Cool. Very, very cool. Go ahead and do some naval stuff, because we can. We're doing great. We're doing really, really good. How's Italy doing? Corrupt the corruptible? Oh boy. Renew Catholicism is good. The role of women. Feminism is a can of worms that we have yet to be open, or yet to open it up, though the time must come sooner or later. Despite the conservative nature of the church in Spain, there is strong support for Catholic among Catholic women for the earlier iterations of feminism that brought about change in a more liberal nations. Our party is split on the issue along reformist and traditional lines. One, on the one hand, the church's teachings on the structure of the family are clear, and we would not wish to give offense or act in an unchristian manner. On the other can we really afford to retain the idea of women acting solely in traditional roles with the modern industrial economy and a broad sense of internationalism on the rise? Eh, we might see. A Catholic nation. The Catholic Church has always had deep roots in our beard, dating back all the way to... You have murdered. Oh, boy. Uh, all the way to the Reconquista. As a consequence, the nations of the peninsula have historically been unparalleled champions of the Catholic faith. And the Catholic orders of all stripes have played an important role in governance and politics. Democratic Iberia is no different, and the number of Catholic organizations played an important role in Iberian politics. One such organization is a prelecture of the Holy Cross and Opus Dei, made up of almost entirely of laymen and secular priests not tied to any monastic orders. Though deeply religiously conservative and supportive of the church doctrine, they were ostracized by many Falangists in the old regime who believed that the Opus Dei was a covert front for a Freemasonry. Since the fall of the old regime, they've become increasingly popular for the role in the various charity efforts and sponsorship of universities, yet recently, they developed some very controversial ideas. While they recognize that Iberia is and must remain a Catholic state, they have shocked many right-wing Catholics across the country and their liberal-minded Jesuit rifles by supporting efforts to expand the freedoms of religious minorities in Iberia. Their leader and founder, Jose Maria Escrevila de Baguera Albas, has argued in his most recent book that pluralism is not to be feared, but loved as a legitimate consequence of personal freedom. Included, including with the slogan, Long live students of all religions and all ideologies. This turn has caused serious tensions within the government, with the question of religious freedoms being talked about openly on the streets. Pressure is being put on the President Fraga to take a side, either to risk losing the support of the Catholic hardliners within his own party, or risk alienating a sensible portion of the Iberian Catholics. A decision will have to be made one way or another. Keep the message more conservative. Hope is die. Uh, at this point, we're probably just going to stick with the conservative democracy just because... 
at this point, it's, it's we can't get market liberal. So for this campaign, we're just gonna go keep the message more conservative, because in the future we will go down probably with the other choice. But since we really can't even do anything, oh my god, 1.3 billion. So we can't do very much about you know changing to market liberals. We might as well choose that choice. You know, it is what it is. Oh, oh, we're so close. Our GDP growth will increase a little. Yes, I love Eastern South America. 65 billion. 15. Can any other nation in the world say they have zero GDP or debt? Or just zero debt? I mean, uh, maybe. Maybe if you can. Bhutan, Empire of Japan. Oh, we have Guangxi and Guangdong there. What is Guan? 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 I have no idea. Oh my goodness, we're building so fast. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, let's, we can go, cut the... Oh. It's not good. Okay, 10 billion. Why not? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh my goodness. That is just... <gasps> Minus 10 billion in deficit. Oh, the role of women. I love women. Audit Opus Die. Audit Opus Die are generally trustworthy a lot, if a little suspect for their international ties. That said, they are far more influential in our nation's economy than we would like them to be. We shan't go as far as criminally probe them. That would be totally unjustified and a waste of resources. However, it would be perfectly reasonable to declare that an audit of their finances and activities is due. A simple bureaucratic review to make sure that everything is in order. While this is obviously a sensible thing to do from a government standpoint, doing it publicly may also ease the fear common among the fascists and the godless that we are unable to treat Catholic organizations objectively. And the new Iberian woman. President Frago is not having a good day. For hours, the AP party room have been engaging in one of the most fractious debates in its short history, splitting down the middle on its approach to the government's policy concerning women's rights. But before now, uh, Fraga and his cabinet had seen fit to avoid the question entirely, seeing it as a divisive distraction from the government's current legislative program. Yet, a small faction on the left side of his party, led by popular journalist and writer Maria Victoria Ferdinand España, has now raised the issue in the party. Re representing the small number of female AP deputies, they were loudly calling for the government to encourage women to enter the workforce and break down traditional gender roles passed down from the old Iberian regime. Usually, Fraga would have been able to safely ignore them, but much to his annoyance, his second-hand man, Senor V, had already waded into the debate backing the woman. He would have to deal with Senor V's insubordination later when this mess was over. The hardliners were responding, as they always did, suggesting that if the government conceded to the feminists that they would soon be demanding abortion rights, the right to divorce, and the legalization of adultery, all fundamental challenges to the status of Iberia as a Catholic country. The rhetoric had now begun to take on hyperbolic proportions, arguing that any movement of women into the workforce would undermine the Iberian family unit, the fundamental building block of Iberian society, thus resulting in social degradation and ultimately collapse. The president stayed out of it until now, hoping that the discussion would cool and they could move on to more pressing matters, but there seems to be no end in sight. He would have to take the podium and intervene in the debate, lest the party tears itself apart. His word would ultimately settle things with the center following his lead. As Fraga took the stage before his party, he set up on a course of action, maintain gener traditional gender roles, and face catastrophe, or women should have the right to work for Iberia just as men do. Our GDP growth could increase a little bit. Women in the workplace, oh, we get more growth, but we already said earlier that we're trying to stay with just conservative democracy for now. And when we play as market liberals eventually again, We'll probably do this. I think just role-playing wise with the AP, this just makes more sense. It just makes a little more sense if we want to just kind of go along with it. Because as much as we love to play as market liberals, it just... I don't know, this campaign, it's been fun. It's been a little unexpected, but I think that that's probably the best choice for us for the AP. Early autoloaders, cool. Let's get some heat integrations. How are these things looking? 3,000 breakthrough. Nikes. Almost 1,200 soft attack. That's a lot of speed, too. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we actually did something. Oh, do we, we got this stuff done. Oh, my God. The 20%? What? Oh, my God. Okay, so we were at, like, 13.9. It jumps up to 20.5. What is Iberia on? What? What? I'm sorry. I'm still slashing the budget, though. But, uh... Oh my gosh, 20%? Oh my gosh. Can, wh what is the highest GDP growth that any nation can get? This is the highest I've ever seen, 20.5? Please, everyone, you better they better invest in Iberia because we're doing great. So, let's go and do modern Christian society. Those that say that religion is a relic of the past or the opiate or the masses, we, have, we are happy to say, have been proven decisively wrong thanks to no sp small part to our efforts. It was a Christian vote that carried us to our first electoral victory, and it shall be the Christian vote that buy buoys us in the future elections. This is only possible because we are alone recognize what other parties do not, that Iberia and its constituent nations are, now and forever, the Christian nations, bearing the heritage of nearly 2,000 years on their collective shoulders. To abandon our faith as a bedrock of society would be folly. To actively abolish it would be madness. 
we gain more stability, which actually we're extremely stable. But face this audit. Formerly the Opus Dei is an upstanding Catholic institution. They are dedicated to the faith and appear to work tirelessly to ensure their devotion. However, there is a possibility that not everything is as it appears on the surface. A commonly held opinion within the party is that this upstanding moral character is too clean, and someone who strives so hard to appear honest is certainly hiding something. The train of thought that Opus Dei is fraud was something that was pre prevalent in far more places than ever expected, from a primary concern to a shred tucked in the back of their mind. It wasn't hard to reach a consensus that something ought, ought to be done here. And so an audit on the Opus Dei was arranged. There was an issue, however, because of the nature of an investigation won't be able to hit everything in a reasonable time. And so to have even a chance of something substantial, the investigation must be carefully directed. Suspicions are raised in the most two locations, their finances and their political connections. Examining their financial connections is risky, as a threat is something any savvy politician knows, but if something is turned up, then it could be decisive in discrediting the opus die. Looking into the political connections could also expose any ties with political parties that may be present, but if they've taken sufficient precautions, then that's likely nothing could be found regardless. Therefore, in order to maximize the odds of finding something suspicious, suspicious the investigators decided to... Political connections... Ooh, hmm. It's risky as their threat is something any savvy politicians know, but if something's turned up, he says, uh, political connections, financial. Ooh, financial or political? That is a tough question to ask. Let's go with. Eh, I'll do financial connections. I really don't care about the politics because they've been pretty good. I mean, I don't want to do anything bad to them. It's just, you know. We'll do the financial stuff, because why not? Cool, very good. Very, very good. Thank you. Cool, sorry about that. My cat wanted to see. So he finds nothing of note, which is good. When the investigation began, it wasn't sure that the AP wanted to find something. Perhaps it was some incriminating documents or some other scandalous piece of evidence. The conditions were strict and not many people approved of an investigation into an institution of the Catholic Church. And so it took a lot more compromising to get even approval into order. Faced with only a small amount of time, hostile oversight, and overly stringent standards, the investigation team was left with a shaft. Even if they didn't, it's hard to tell if it would make a difference. The Alphas died were set to set an example in everything they did, and the audit finds that they did just that. Patrolling the record sent one... Uh, sent one the impression of a French, freshly sponged room so clean and reflected back at you. If anything, the most notable thing to be found in the results is this clean, cleanliness itself. No other organization carries themselves in such a wonderful manner. Well, that's good. That's great. I had no qualms about them, you know, being super clean, so... Did I just cut this? One, two, three, four, five, five, five. Okay, we're almost on six. Five, not bad. That growth. I mean, holy cow. Wow. Maybe I should become an Iberian. Maybe we should we maybe we should all become Iberians because this is not bad. I mean, sure they're not perfect here yet, but this ain't bad. Holy cow! Come on, I just want to slash slash that there. That's bad. yes. We lowered the debt by oh, five billion dollars in this episode alone. I mean, it's a long video, a long episode, but still. And we have one more focus though. Dawn of a new era. Finally, we remove weakened sovereignty. Finally, we greatly improved Iberia's stability. So, when a party was elected on a platform of common sense, economics, and good Christian virtues, the fascists and Marxists alike spat venom in the press and in the streets, deriding us as delusional and quixotic for our uh, dedication to our principles. Now they say nothing. If they dare to do so, they are shouted down. Not by us, for we would never deign to engage in political brawling, but by our countless loyal supporters we find amongst the populace. What clear mandated government could we possibly enjoy? Iberia, with the backing of the government, or the people, and the Catholic Church has already begun its climb to its heights unmatched since the days of the Armada and the empires. We have in short order accomplished within a democratic system what the Cadillas could not accomplish in nearly two decades of their joint dictatorship. A new era dawns for all of Iberia. One of peace, prosperity, and above all, stability. There can be no greater gift, gift to our for our generation to lead the Iberians of the future. God bless Iberia. Political power, remove weak and sovereignty, and greatly improve our stability. Exemplary. We can rejoice, for the we are the shining example of the national stability in Europe, or perhaps even the whole world. Thanks to the efforts of the government, even the most pessimistic naysayers can agree that the Iberian Peninsula stands firmly united. Good. And I was wondering when we're going to get rid of this, because we lose political power, and even more political power, and we lose 10% stability, which is fine with us, because we don't really care, because we're already very, 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 very stable. Oh, but I don't want to have to end my time here. This is so nice. 68 billion versus 12. Oh. What's our GDP to debt ratio? Negative 39%. Man, heat integration. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Ah, oh, civilian austerity. Jeez. I don't want to leave Iberia. I don't. It's so nice here. Oh, well, that barely did anything. I went down by, like, 10 million, maybe? Anti-tank. Oh, my goodness. Infantry weapon improvements, uh, 8. Nice. Very nice. Less than 12 billion. Annual income rate, 38.5%. 
Just so good. Go ahead and cut this down a little bit more. Almost a, minus 11 billion. Less than a billion spent on construction. How does that affect us? One, two, three. Almost four. We almost have four. A nuclear reactor has been made again. John of New Era and my friends, unfortunately, this campaign must come to an end. I have really, really enjoyed this campaign. But that is all that we can do for Iberia. And so Dusk approaches a new order. Thank you for playing. Uh, credits, thank you to all the mod developers. This was an awesome, awesome... This is an awesome mod. I love TNO so much. And former members, of course, uh, dedicated to Korean James Bond. This was just awesome. But regardless, like I said, there is not much else we can do here. We could just cut down the debt, but I think it's time and it's best for us to move on. But regardless, I really hope you enjoy this campaign. Like I said before, I loved it. I, I really love playing this campaign. But if you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow in a different campaign. Thanks for watching. I really mean it. And have a great rest of your day.